The vote on redefining marriage is not a vote on the value and worth of people who engage in homosexuality. This is not a value judgment on gays or homosexuals. It is not a vote about equality and it is certainly not a vote about love. It is a vote about redefining the word marriage. It's got nothing to do with, nor is it linked to racism, as some doctors, doctors, want to suggest. It's got nothing to do with bigotry or homophobia. The upcoming postal plebiscite is about redefining a term that has meant the same thing to all people throughout all countries, throughout all time. A union between one man and one woman for life with the possibility of reproduction. Do all marriages last a lifetime? No. Do all marriages result in children? No. But the majority do, and until very recently, the term marriage has always evoked these realities. Redefining one word does and will result in redefining other words. It's not an isolated event, that's a fact. The evidence from around the world is crystal clear. Redefine marriage? and it has a massive effect on the language surrounding families and gender. It results in oppression and the loss of freedom for parents, businesses, religious organisations and educators. It has been reported that more than 60 articles of legislation will be directly affected and countless more if the term marriage is redefined. The reality is same-sex couples have already benefited greatly from many, many legislative changes that have ensured legal and civil equality with married and de facto couples. Simon Copland, a member of the editorial board for Green Agenda, a member of the Greens, published an article on the Greens website in 2015. He clearly stated, in Australia, marriage equality actually has few practical impacts. State-based de facto legislation gives same-sex couples practically all the same rights as their married straight counterparts. From the horse's mouth, he admits that equality already existed then and even more has been done for same-sex couples since. Mark and Ben, the gay couple who have been in a relationship for 15 years, have spoken out and confirmed that they have practically the same rights as de facto couples and have dealt with the legal issues surrounding wills, power of attorney and other things by employing a lawyer. They have equality. Marriage is not a human right. Human rights are things like access to food, water and shelter. Human rights are about basic needs, human worth and dignity. Marriage is an exclusive relationship and that's okay. There's a lot of other exclusive relationships as well and they use, we use words or language to help us understand the diversity, the differences in certain relationships like parent, child, niece, nephew, uncle, auntie, friend, teacher, employer or neighbour. Words differentiate. Words are great tools when it comes to diversity. Words don't need to be redefined. This debate is not about being a homophobe, anti-gay, a racist, anti-love or any other such ridiculous accusations. This vote is not a value judgment to measure the worth of gay people. We can and do still respect and value all people regardless of their sexual orientation. In doing so, we don't have to agree to redefining words. There are consequences of changing the age-old meaning of words. There are considerations we must entertain in this debate, especially regarding the freedom and independence parents have, as well as protections for our kids that will, that will be required in, an, in the education system. Don't be bullied or intimidated into silence. My gay friends and even strangers who have contacted me know I value them as people and I'm not making a judgement on their relationships. I am simply voicing my concerns about changing words and what they actually mean. There is a better way in this debate and it is okay to vote no.